Thank you, Laska Hirlock. And thank you very much to the Minister. And also, I'd just like to thank the independent senators for bringing this forward. At the outset, I'd just like to say that I don't think that it is correct to say that any of us in any party or non-party have been silent on this issue. I think that, as um, Senator Moynihan has outlined, you know, it, it is an issue probably that most of us are really deeply aware of. Most of us have been on local authorities and understand what goes into it, the amount of work, but also I've certainly brought it up on the floor of the chamber and, um, and the leader has put, brought forward a letter to yourself, Minister, based on my representation there. I know that the Labour Party has also put forward commencement matters, so on, on those two counts of those two parties, I can say that, that that's not correct, that we've been silent. But, uh, so I don't think we should politicise this. I think it is something we all want to work on and we all want to see a resolution to. Um, it, it's a huge honour to be elected as a councillor and almost all of us here, as I've said, have been elected to local authorities and it usually comes after years of voluntary work with our communities. Um, and so it can be really hard to put our hands up then and to say that life can be really difficult as a councillor because you want to be there. And then you're also saying, and you know, I'm un also underpaid, so pay me a, a decent living. Now I myself, was elected in 2019, so after some, some of the others here. But I did it, I did it full time. Um, I didn't get paid anything else. That's 17,700 a year was what I was paid. Um, and so many more do it for an awful, an awful lot longer. But the key thing is, it was hard to make ends meet. I had no childcare for my, for my children. That, wa that wasn't paid for. Um, and what happens is that you have women who drop out of local government. How many, how many years could, could somebody like that really um, stay in, in local authorities? Um, I know that when I became a councillor in Galway City Council, there were no mothers elected in the previous, the, the, the previous lot of councillors. There were no mo mothers. There were women, but, but not those who had children. Um, and in fact, somebody who did get elected the previous time in 2014, when she became pregnant, she had to let go of her seat and a man took that seat. And that's not to say that, that um, we shouldn't make, make way for other councillors if th things change, but I would hate to think that it was because a person didn't have childcare, didn't have maternity leave, um, and found that, particularly in rural, um, in rural constituencies, that the amount of time that you're on the road travelling is just too much to bear when, even if you don't have a full-time job, you have other responsibilities. So, Look, I think, that, I think that you're willing to, to make the changes that are needed, Minister, but I think like many others have said, and particularly um, eloquently from Senator Crockwell, it's been years, you know, it has been years. Um, 17,700 is not enough. And even, even if things hadn't changed in 2014 and there hadn't been an awful lot more expected of councillors, it's still not enough. Um, one of the councillors within my, my own party was a full-time nurse, five children um, and also a councillor and had to give up being a nurse because it's just not possible. And councils are supposed to be microcosms of society. And we have councils across this country where we don't have people from um, diverse backgrounds. We have 6% women on some councils in this country. Um, and I'd like to, I suppose, to give a shout out to some of the caucuses and women's uh, committees. And I know that um, Councillor Lonergan has written to yourself and you responded last, last week. But, um, you know, th there are, um, there are a lot more women on some councils than others. And so you can have a caucus and a committee on some councils, but if you're on a council where there's, where there's only one woman, you know, you're a committee of one, how are you going to really advocate for yourself on that committee? Um, and I'd just like to give a shout out as well to um, Councillor Mary Hode, the first woman elected as president of ALIG, and uh, one of her first acts is to call for maternity leave for women who are in local government, um, because it is outrageous. That you, can't, that you don't have maternity leave, but it's beyond having maternity leave. And I, and I have a copy of, your, of the letter here from your department in relation to maternity leave. It's actually, it's beyond leave. It's actually about the fact that, you know, you can't engage in proxy voting if you don't turn up. 
um, you, you, you can't be confident, your party can't be confident that they'll be able to carry a vote. So that needs to be sorted out. You have no admin work to do all of the kind of work that Senator Moynihan has, has laid out there. We need admin support if we're going to be juggling um, having a very small baby at the very least. Um, so, Look, there, there are an awful lot more things that I think that need to be looked, looked at apart from the increase in salary. And I know that you've set up the task force. I think that that's a really good move. But we do have a commitment in the programme for government for this to be addressed within 12 months. Um, and as I'm sick of saying, but we are 40% women here and that's why these things really matter to us. I'm sure that that's why Fianna Gael had put forward a proposal in relation to maternity leave. Um, I want to see that happen. Um, because I don't want that we, we have to keep standing up and using our time in the Shannon to address this issue of councillors' pay that's actually, you know, um, it, it stands on its own two feet. The Moorhead report I have huge problems with, as many people do. It shows complete lack of respect for councillors. Um, it, it really does in the, in the kind of language that it uses. And, and as one of my own councillors in the Green Party said to me, you know, it's all very well telling us that we shouldn't um, engage in representations, but what are we going to do? Not answer our emails, not answer the phone. You know, what kind of a public representative are you then? Um, so, look, thank you very much for the time. I look forward to hearing from you. I know that myself and everybody here is going to keep on your back over this. Um, so, sorry about that. <laughs> But uh, that's, that's what you get paid the big bucks for. Thank <laughs> you, Senator O'Reilly, and thank you.